All right, Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Raka Kwadash. I want to give double honor to the elder apostles of Great Millstone and Shalom and salute to the uh, hopefully let from the least to the greatest. Um, so um, I, I got a video that I had uh, recorded um, a while back maybe about a couple of days ago. And the reason why I got this, um, I typed the red C is because the clip goes into, um, they found more evidence that, um, you know, the, uh, the biblical stories were true. Um, now part of this truth is, is, a, is you have to have faith. You have to believe these stories, you know, and I believe that the, the Lord gave each and every one of us, you know, our, um, you know, our, um, our share, our, uh, you know, our certain amount of uh, faith and wisdom, you see, and each brother had their own, own um, account, or uh, I'm looking for the word um, portion, that's it, each brother had their own portion. You know, and I believe that, you know, um, we were there. Some some brothers were actually there or during the time of Yahweh Shah. Of course, they were because, um, you know, reincarnation is uh, biblical and it's true. So some brothers had to been back there. You know, you got Jake that's walking around, walking these streets that's not in the truth. That was even back then. Or back around the time, or even dealing with Yahweh Shah, you know. But uh, any other way, I want to play that clip because a lot of times I um, TikTok, you know, it's it's you know, it's become a haven for a lot of conspiracies. But which conspiracy means to conspire means to um, they call us conspiracy theorists. But some of them, some of them jakes be going um. A little overboard but it's a lot of information that's coming to the forefront you know and we just use these videos as edification that's it you know all uh all we want to do is edify you know we don't have any gimmicks or anything like that but if we can uh use something to further bring out the truth and uh edify to the elect then a hey, so be it you know so this video that i'm about to pull up I often watch her videos. Uh, let me. I think her name Pearly. You know she she understands she's an Israelite, but you know, hey, eat take the uh, take the uh, eat the meat and spit out the bones. All right, but let me play this video. All right, this is the original channel that I got the video off of the Perky channel, but I'm gonna go to um, I got another source because I had that video. Um, I think I lost that video. So hold on, brothers. So um, I just typed it in, and let's go to this video right here. There's proof that the Red Sea parting actually happened, which proves the Bible to be real, which proves God to be real. Watch this video with me. We have proof that the Red Sea crossing happened. Like proof, not just artifacts on the bottom. We had those. We had chariot wheels on the bottom of the Red Sea. We had all these cool little artifacts. But the coolest thing that I saw is the shoreline. If you've ever watched the Ten Commandments movie, they had that big pillar of fire that came down. That's mentioned in the Bible, this pillar of fire. I just pictured these flames coming down. But when you go to that shoreline where it was documented to happen, the entire shoreline is melted sand. And it takes about 3,000 degrees or more to melt that sand. And it's evenly melted. You can almost see like footprints. There's stones infused in this melted sand. This is amazing. You don't hear about it. If it was a proof of evolution, it would be in every single textbook. But it's a proof that there was an exodus, like we're having today. You're talking about the exodus, people leaving the cities. If you like content. So there you go. Um, and there's much more evidence um, of they got um, this artifacts of when the um, when the Israelites, us Israelites, we made the, the bull, the gold. And the 12 uh, stones and all that. And then you go up to uh, Mount Sinai. Is it Mount Sinai? It's still like 
the top of the mountain is burnt. So it's 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 a hey, but they got that they got a lot of that part. The elites they cut off that part so they don't got ordinary people. They got all that land cut off. You can't even go n nowhere near it. And that's how Esau does. It's, it's sacred because it's our history, but he tries to make it his history. But all those artifacts are still over there in, the, in, in that area, you know? And they've been right there for, for thousands of years. Ever since we, A, hey, all the areas where we were in the wilderness, that's, them artifacts are still there to this day. And they've been, they've been there uh, throughout the centuries. You know, uh, uh, throughout the centuries when we went been going back in captivity, captivity with these other nations, from Solomon to David, uh, all them artifacts from Moses and all that, they still was right there in that area, you know. So, you know, I just wanted to make that, you know, video. I'll get a scripture. Hold on. All right. And hey, hey, we just had the Passover, <laughs> so that remind me of that. Uh, not too long ago, maybe a couple months back, you know, but we in, uh, what's this? We in July, at, uh, mid July. So it says, this is Exodus chapter 14. It says, and, and the Lord Moses and the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pehavroth, Pehavroth. Between Megiddo, Migdol, and the sea against the bells of the bells of Farm. Salaki, um, uh, going over the words, I'm mispronouncing them. It says, Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. It says, So Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, the wilderness has uh, shut them in, and, and, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart. That he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all the hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did and they did so. So it says, and it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants were turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariots. And you see, they said it is evidence of chariots it, all in that water, man. To this day, it's still you still got chariots down there. Uh, then them guys do deep blue, uh, deep diving in the sea, and this chariots, gold chariots, still down there. Um, they said he made ready his he made ready his chariots and took him his people with him, and he took six hundred chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt and he pursued after the children of Israel and the children of Israel went out with an high hand but the Egyptians pursued after that all the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them and capping by the sea besides uh, Phil ha ha Rift Haroth, before Belzephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lift up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell them in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. So this is the part where Moses parted the sea. All right, I wanted to pull up a picture so you can get a visionary of how it looked. You know, you, you could imagine um, how deep the Red Sea is. And uh, it had to be uh, like waters or walls on each side. And you better believe it might have been a chariot and in and, and the sight while all this was happening. All right. So let's go back. 
So it says the sea is divided. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And that's going to happen again with us. These elites going to come down on us and you go, it might be one of you brothers that's telling us, hey, stand fast, hold on. The Lord's going to fight with us, you know? Hey, it's going to go down, man. So it says, and the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore, criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forth. But lift up thy rod and stretch it out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. And I will get me and it and I will give uh, get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen and the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel. See, so it had to have been a it must have been a chariot standing right over the, uh, you know, they camp. So it says, and the angel of the Lord which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before thy face and stood uh, behind them. So it, that was a chariot. That was a chariot. So it said, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Oh, so the chariot was standing in the, so that had to have been a, Come on, that had to have been a, a magnificent, uh, a magnificent, extraordinary event, man. No wonder, um, you know, uh, the Lord and, you know, put emphasis on, hey, I brought you out of the land of Egypt. That was great. You Can you imagine that? All the Israelites standing, it must, it might have been like a million or two million people standing out there on one side. And the Egyptians, it probably was hundreds of thousands of them or thousands of them on one side in, in, a, in a chariot just sitting right there spinning in the midst, in the middle of them, you know? So it says, um, and it came between the camps of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but gave light by night to these so that the one came not near the other all the night. Oh, okay. Wow. So it says, and Moses stretched out his hands over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong wind all the night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. See that? That was amazing, man. It says, and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Wow. It says, and the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all for our fairy's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, watched the Lord look unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of the fire of the cloud. And troubled the hosts of the Egyptians and took off their chariots wheels and they drove them heavy so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Oh, so they went in there. They went in after them, but turned around. Right. So it says, and the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thy hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians. Okay, so they went in to flee after Israel while we running. Now, by the time we got on the other side, Moses turned around and, and put his hand out and the Egyptians running the other way, even trying to get uh, to shore, whether they on this side or the other side, they fleeing. They like, fuck this. But the Lord said, hey, put your hand out 
and, 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 and drown them motherfuckers. So it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So that's why you still, to this day, you find a lot of, uh, they probably, a lot of, most of the shit probably buried, but every now and then they'll find a, a horse, a chariot wheel, a gold chariot wheel uh, from one of the horsemen in the, in deep down in that sea, all the way down in the ocean. They'll find it, man. Because it's from like, what, two, three thousand years ago. That joint was just sitting there, of course, it's buried, uh, uh, all right, buried in the sand. You know? So it says that Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. It says, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of furrows that came in into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. So the Lord drowned all of them Egyptians. The Lord destroyed all of them. It says, but the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on the right, on the right hand and on the left. Wow. It says, thus saith the Lord, thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw Egyptians dead upon the sea, the seashore. Wow. It says, and Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord. And believe the Lord and his servants Moses. So yeah, that was a good story, man. That hey. And that's true. It's not just you just can't read it and just, oh, that's it. No, this actually happened. This happened in real time. This happened in the past. And in this realm, it actually happened. That's how you gotta put it in your mind, because this really happened. You know, and the Lord about to start showing more extraordinary things greater than that. He said this this uh this deliverance is gonna be way greater than the deliverance in Egypt, out of Egypt. You know? So I hope this was edifying to the body. Till again, shalom.